Ridgway, author of quite a few Tudor history books, including ones on Anne Boleyn, such as The Fall of Anne Boleyn, A Countdown. Now, I've done a top 10 facts about Anne Boleyn talk before, but I thought I'd carry on my new Facts About series, which started with Catherine of Aragon, by doing Henry VIII's Wives in Order. So, here are 20 interesting facts about Anne Boleyn, which are different to the previous 10 facts that I shared before. Number one. It is a myth that Anne Boleyn was middle class or a commoner. She was a member of the landed gentry. She was a commoner in that she wasn't uh, royal, but she was very privileged. Her maternal family was the Howard family, uh, the Dukes of Norfolk, and her father, Thomas Boleyn, was the heir to the earldom of Ormond. Number two. She didn't change the spelling of her surname from Bullen to Berlin to be more French or to be more posh. There was no standardised spelling at the time, so Berlin is spelt in lots of different ways, in the records, in letters, documents, and on tombs, etc. I'll give you a link to my video on the spelling of Berlin. Number three. Anne had one sister and three brothers although two brothers, Thomas and Henry, didn't survive childhood. Number four, Anne was away from England from the summer of 1513 until late 1521 or early 1522, serving Margaret of Austria, then Mary Tudor, Queen of France, and finally Queen Claude of France. Anne's first mention in the records at the English court is at Shrovetide on the 4th of March, 1522, when she played Perseverance in the Chateau Vert pageant. Number five. Before she was courted by King Henry VIII, Anne was romantically involved with courtier Henry Percy, son and heir of the Earl of Northumberland, who was serving in Cardinal Wolsey's household. Poet, courtier and diplomat Thomas Wyatt the Elder also seems to have carried a flame for her. Her family were also involved in negotiations for her to marry James Butler, son of Sir Pierce Butler of Ireland. Number six. It is not known when exactly Henry VIII started wooing Anne, but he applied for a dispensation to marry her in August 1527. Number seven. It was Anne Boleyn's copy of William Tyndall's The Obedience of a Christian Man, which ended up in the king's hands after it was confiscated from one of her lady's sweethearts, that may well have sparked the break with Rome. Thank you, Madge. The book was instrumental in helping Henry VIII see how he could have his marriage to Catherine of Aragon annulled while also limiting the power of the papacy in England because it showed the king that he, as a ruler, was only answerable to God and not to the Pope. Number eight, Henry VIII raised Anne to the peerage in September 1532, making her Marquess of Pembroke in her own right. It came with lands worth over £1,000 per year, approximately £300,000 in today's money. Number nine, although the official date of Henry and Anne's secret marriage is the 25th of January 1533, the Feast of St. Paul, chronicler Edward Hall gives an earlier date of the 14th of November 1532, St. Erkenwald's Day, which makes sense as it was the day they landed at Dover after their successful trip to Calais to meet Francis I and they finally started cohabiting after that date. Number 10. Although they had got married, perhaps in November 1532, but definitely on the 25th of January 1533, it wasn't until Good Friday, the 11th of April 1533, that King Henry VIII informed his royal council that Anne was his wife and that they must accord her royal honours. 
the next day and caused quite a stir when she processed to mass wearing cloth of gold and lots of jewels and accompanied by no less than 60 ladies. Number 11. At her coronation procession on the 31st of May 1533, Anne introduced her white falcon badge. The white falcon came from the heraldic crest of the Butler family and in Anne's badge it was wearing the imperial crown and holding a royal sceptre. It was perched on a tree stump from which red and white roses burst forth, life coming from barrenness. So Anne suggesting that she'd be the one to give Henry his longed-for son to continue the Tudor line. Number 12. At her coronation at Westminster Abbey on the 1st of June 1533, Anne was crowned with the crown of St Edward, a crown usually reserved for crowning the reigning monarch. Number 13. Anne is recorded as being pregnant three times. In 1533, her pregnancy resulted in the birth of a daughter, Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I. In 1534, she was described as having a goodly belly, but then the pregnancy just disappears from the records. So it must have been a false pregnancy or a stillbirth. Then she miscarried a male fetus in January 1536. Number 14, Anne was not a Protestant. It is far too early to call her Protestant, far too early in the Reformation. Anne was influenced by French reformers who were non-schismatic and who were looking to reform the church from within. Had she lived, then she may well have become Protestant. Number 15, Anne saw her husband, the King, for the last time on the 1st of May, 1536, at the May Day Joust. She was arrested the next day and imprisoned at the Tower of London. Number 16. Even though three quarters of the offences Anne was charged with can be disproved because either Anne or the man she was alleged to have slept with were actually not at the place cited in the indictments, she was found guilty at her trial on the 15th of May, 1536. Number 17. Anne was sentenced to death to be either burnt at the stake or beheaded according to the king's pleasure. Her sentence was commuted to beheading by sword. Number 18. Anne was scheduled to be executed on the 18th of May and had made her last confession and got ready for her execution, only to be told later that day that she wouldn't be dying until the following day. Number 19. Following her execution on the 19th of May 1536, a chest that had contained bow staves had to be fetched from the tower armoury to house her remains, as no coffin had been provided. Number 20. Although Cromwell and the King spread news that the King had been saved from a conspiracy instigated by his own wife and courtiers, there were those that were cynical. Etienne Dolle, the French scholar, printer and reformer, wrote of Anne being condemned on false charges and killed by a tyrant. The Empress's sister, Mary of Hungary, wrote, As none but the organist confessed, nor herself either, people think he invented this device to get rid of her. And, adding insightfully, that when he is tired of this one, he will find some occasion of getting rid of her. And Ambassador Chapuis, who was no fan of the Boleyns, recorded that no witnesses had been produced against George or Anne and that the men had been condemned upon presumption and certain indications without valid proof or confession and that there are some who murmur at the mode of procedure against her and the others. Thank you for joining me. I do hope that you found those 20 facts interesting. There are lots of videos about Anne Boleyn on this channel, so do browse the questions about Anne Boleyn playlist and the fall of Anne Boleyn playlist, for example. You can also have a browse on my website, The Anne Boleyn Files. And 
I've written a few books on Anne too. You'll find some links in the description. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye bye.